Good morning, mathematicians. We are looking at Tuesday and we are starting with fractions of whole numbers. We want to know what two times one fourth equals. Well, I know that I can take my two times my one, so I have two fourths. Here, I'm going to take my two times my two and two times two over four, so I'm going to have four fourths. Here, I have two times three over four, so I'm going to do my two times three equals six, and my four stays my denominator. Two times four over four is two times four, which is eight over four. This last one, once again, boys and girls, two times five over four, I multiply my whole number times my numerator. Two times five is 10, and my denominator stays the same. Well, let's go to finding the area. This is new. This is the whole work in our illustrative math unit um, of our unit two. We're thinking about fractions and area of fraction side lengths. How is finding the area of this diagram and this diagram the same? Well, first of all, boys and girls, to find area, we multiply length times width. That's what's going to happen here, just like it's going to happen here. So we can write that to find area we multiply length times width. This is how they are the same. I'm just going to put that in a little bit out of space. That was my statement for how they're the same. Next, I'm supposed to say, how are they different? I'm going to put how they're different over here simply because you know me, I write kind of big, um, and I need to go ahead and make sure I clarify that, but I'm going to put it over here. When I go to multiply this to find out how to find the area, I'm going to multiply the length times the width, but I know that the whole is set to be one square, okay? So one square is what is set to be a whole. Now down here, the same thing is not true. Down here, the whole is actually set to be two rectangles. So instead of looking at this as a whole, this is actually a half. Do you see that? The way that the whole is set, here one whole is one rectangle. Here one rectangle is one half. So that is how they're different. How they're different is when you look at them, you see that in the top, and you can write this with me. One rectangle, it's not really a square, it's really more of a rectangle. And um, one rectangle is a whole. In the bottom, one rectangle is a half. So boys and girls, this statement right here, I'm going to kind of write it to the side in parentheses. This is how they're different, okay? Now, I love to remind you that oftentimes in math, when we're asked to compare and contrast, we're really being asked to use a comparison symbol, greater than, less than, or equal to. This is a non-example of that. We're really asked to compare and contrast these. When you're asked to compare and contrast, you might also be asked to tell how two things are the same and how two things are different. So right here is my statement for how they're different. And right here is my statement for how they are the same. Let's go ahead to our next one where we are calculating volume. Is this a regular figure? Totally not. So I'm going to think about its layer structure in order to calculate the volume correctly. When I look at the bottom layer, I see two cubes here. But I can presume that there are two cubes here and two cubes here. Because, of course, there has to be six cubes in this bottom layer to be supporting the structure above it. So my bottom layer has six cubes. Now, when I look at my middle layer, I know that that has to have four cubes. I can't see all of them because some of them, of course, are hidden by the structure that they support that rises above them. And my very top layer, of course, very clearly we can see it has one simple so if I do 1 plus 4 plus 6, I know that this structure has 11 cubes or 11 cubic centimeters. 
Now let's go down below and let's take a look at the volume of a regular shape. The volume of the below cuboid is 24 meters cubed. Find the cuboid's width. So here, boys and girls, we're not calculating volume. We are told the volume. Instead, I am finding a missing dimension. We've seen this time and time again. We can use our multiplication facts and our good mathematical thinking to figure out what the width has to be. I know that the length is four. I know that the height is three. What I want to know is really what that width has to be, right? So I can go ahead and multiply these two together. Four times three is 12. So I know that whatever completes this fact is what the W, what the width is going to be. 12 times what gives me 24? Well, I know that that width has to be two. So that again, 12 times two is 24. So what would our missing dimension be? Our missing dimension would be two meters. All right, the very last question for today is thinking about fractions as quotients. We are to write an equation below that illustrates the diagram. Now, again, as we've seen, there are different ways that you could represent this and I represent this, and we could both be correct. But let's talk about one way that we could, uh, that we could represent the diagram we're seeing below. Within this one tape diagram, what fraction do I see? Well, I know that the denominator is going to be how many parts the whole is broken into. Well, the whole is broken into four parts. One, two, three, four. There are four parts in my whole, so that's my denominator. The top, the numerator, is how many of those parts I have. So how many of them have shading? Well, three out of four have shading. I see three-fourths here and here and here. So how many times am I seeing three-fourths? Well, I'm seeing it three times. So this is one way that we can show or represent this tape diagram three times three fourth. 